Hello again, I'm Paulo Shikarian, uh, CEO and co-founder of CyberCon. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video today. This is what I feel is a very important topic and it deals with understanding how patching and remediation decisions are being made in your organization. And the reason that this is so important is that if you're having a conversation with one of your technicians and they're telling you, we're patching everything and you're just taking that at face value, there's a very good chance you're taking on some unforeseen cyber risk. There was a recent stat that says nearly 60% of chief security officers admit to being breached due to known but unpatched vulnerabilities. And that's quite incredible when you think about it because they're effectively admitting failure. But these same CISOs also know that with a thousand new vulnerability disclosures each month, which has been the trend since early 2017 now, that it's not reasonable to avoid all breaches due to vulnerabilities. It's a very hard problem to determine what to patch and make that prioritization decision. So you hear that stat and maybe you're thinking you're one of those organizations where people are telling you, yeah, we patch all our vulnerabilities. And I think the key here is to really unpack that statement when someone says that to you. And so I view there's kind of three questions to ask, and that is, one, how long does it take to do those patches? Two, what about the low and medium scored vulnerabilities? And three, is this only external vulnerabilities or does that include internal ones as well? Because by asking these questions, now you are forcing whoever makes that statement to define the standard by what it means that we patch all our vulnerabilities. And so when you ask those questions, you might get something like this. And I know because I've had this conversation multiple times and I'll often hear things like, we patch everything that's critical by NIST within 90 days, or we patch all our external vulnerabilities within 60 days. And right away when you hear that, it's, uh, it should draw some red flags. Because first is the timing matters. And the reason for this is because in your organization, you're identifying the vulnerability well after it's been disclosed. And not to mention, there is a little bit of a chasm in the communication going from cybersecurity to IT. On the other hand, the hackers are starting to engineer an exploit from the data, data disclosure that precedes even you identifying it in your organization. So, Quickly patching vulnerabilities that are likely to be affected by hackers is very important. And if you're considering everything the same, chances are you're falling behind on some very important vulnerabilities. The next question deals with why the non-critical NIST vulnerabilities. Well, the National Institute of Standards CVSS ranking is more of a guideline. It's not designed to be predictive and there's multiple peer-reviewed studies that show it's not predictive. And there have been many vulnerabilities that have been widely exploited that were on the low scale of the NIST ranking. Now, the NIST ranking is often used for compliance reasons and that's fine, but it's not the be all and end all. There has to be some way to inform about uh, what hackers are actually going to use. And we should not be ignoring the vulnerabilities that are low and medium NIST ranking they should be investigated and decisions should be made based on what the bad guys are doing. And then getting to my third question to ask why internal vulnerabilities are important. While I would agree that generally it's good practice to start with the external vulnerabilities, the internal ones should not be ignored. And that is because hackers will move laterally within an organization, hackers will la leverage um, malicious emails and other vectors to get directly to the internal systems anyway. Uh, we've seen some recent examples with that with uh, some vulnerabilities used in malware 
uh, relating to uh, COVID-19 scams to gain access to systems. So the internal vulnerabilities still, still matter. At the end of the day, the question shouldn't be a binary one, yes or no, that we're patching or we're not. It's more of how do we prioritize the patching and this is a much more sensible conversation and one that will ultimately uh, lead to proper risk reduction. At Sirecon, we aid in that process with our platform by providing predictions of which vulnerabilities will be exploited by hackers through a combination of threat intelligence and machine learning. So if you'd like to learn more, please visit us on our website. Otherwise, uh, thanks again for watching. Take care.